Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind. We've got some leftist hypocrisy to get into today. You know, one thing that I find astounding about leftists is that it seems they have an inability to take warning. You know, we're always stuck in this repeating cycle where leftists come out with this new genius plan, new genius idea. Oh, we know exactly how to fix, you know, whatever the complex issue of the day is. We have the solution. The solution tends to be, you know, government spending, money printing, blaming rich people for the world's problems. Let's tax them into oblivion. That's the way we're going to make a greater society. They have all these grand ideas, but in many cases, ignorant, misguided ideas that aren't exactly accounting for unintended consequences, yet obvious consequences, and we warn them endlessly. Hey, you probably shouldn't do that. Hey, how about we stop spending so much money and giving out stimulus checks? Ever heard of inflation? Yeah, that's a bad thing. That's going to happen. How about we not give Iran six billion dollars? How about we not defund the police? How about we we not do these things? How about we not arbitrarily increase the minimum wage, expecting it's not going to have downstream economic effects? How about we not tax the rich into oblivion because, well, they're the venture capitalist class that's constantly mobilizing money and investing in the private sector, allowing the economy to grow, and every single time they respond with something along the lines of pish posh. Sounds like a bunch of pish posh. Sounds like a bunch of conservative propaganda to me. All conservatives want to do is serve the interest of the wealthy and the rich. No, what we want to do is maintain economic stability. What we want to do is not disincentivize work or incentivize crime. We want common sense policies. You just won't listen. We warn you every single time. If you do this, it's going to have a negative impact. They never listen. And then here we are. We told them multiple times. You can't demonize. You cannot target rich people or corporations, especially on a state level, they're just going to leave. You're going to send jobs elsewhere and you're going to send a big portion of your tax base out of state or possibly out of country. They didn't want to listen. And now here we are, the Democrats, or specifically Democrats in Washington, just lost Jeff Bezos, who allegedly now is planning to make residents move to business-friendly tax haven Miami. What a surprise. And this, by the way, comes right after a proposed wealth tax that the government in Washington state was planning on imposing. We've got some stuff to get into, another I told you so moment, so let's roll the tape. All right, friends, so read the headline here from CNBC. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is leaving Seattle for Miami. Jeff Bezos, who founded Amazon out of his Seattle garage in 1994, is leaving the city and moving to Miami to be near his parents and his space company, Blue Origin. I'm sure that's the reason, right? We'll get into that later. Bezos announced the decision in an Instagram post on late Thursday, which included a video of him touring one of Amazon's earliest offices, the garage of his rented home in the Seattle suburb of Bellevue, Washington. It was there that Bezos in 1995 launched Amazon as an online bookseller, before transforming the company into a retail and cloud computing giant. I lived in Seattle longer than I've lived anywhere else and have so many amazing memories here, Bezos wrote. As exciting as the move is, it's an emotional decision for me. Seattle, you will always have a piece of my heart. And so, of course, the NBC is in full damage control mode, attempting to portray this thing as, well, it's just an emotional decision to be close to his parents. Give me a freaking break. You're telling me that Jeff Bezos is leaving Seattle, essentially the city that made him, you could argue, the place where it all started, the place where he has the deepest connection to. You mean to tell me he's leaving Seattle, the Democrat stronghold, the Democrat utopia for the evil fascist Magalan known as Florida? For no reason other than he wants to be closer to his parents? No, obviously the reason is Seattle has become a drug-infested wasteland. This story is about a beautiful jewel that has been violated and a crisis of faith amongst a generation of Seattleites falling out of love with their home. I drive my 12-year-old's uh, carpool through Yesler uh, when we do carpool, and it's a good talking point about, you know, what they're seeing. Ranting and raving, screaming silently, coming completely unraveled before our eyes. They're raving! Shut up! We're driving both! I can't it! Shut up! Travis, just relax. Travis, do you want to smoke? Travis, you want to smoke or a candy bar? No! Oh! But, um... 
Will you continue to do that? Oh, I'm having a blast now. It is so much fun. You know, Seattle, where there's homeless meth addicts going through schizophrenic episodes or meth psychosis. You know, the city of Seattle, the city of love, the city of summerly love with axe-wielding hobos on the streets accosting random people. Yeah, I'm sure that is no factor as to why Jeff Bezos is leaving. Come on. That's obviously part of the reason. People don't feel safe. And if it's not safety or progressive failures on the issue, of safety and crime, it's the tax structure. Washington state senator behind wealth tax proposal responds to Bezos' departure. Washington senator Noel Frame isn't disappointed in Jeff Bezos' decision to move to Miami despite the potential loss of revenue from a wealth tax that she's been pushing in her home state. Bezos, who stepped down as Amazon CEO in 2021, didn't cite taxes in his Instagram post announcing the move to Miami. I wonder why. But the decision sparked questions about whether the tax policy played a role. Washington state also recently passed a 7% capital gains tax. Frame said revenue estimates from a potential wealth tax in Washington state won't change as they already account for some degree of taxpayer mobility and avoidance behavior. Avoidance behavior, Jesus. Oh my god. My entire freaking adult professional life is avoidance behavior. Jeff Bezos is far from the only billionaire in Washington state. Frame sponsored a wealth tax bill in the Washington state legislature earlier this year that would have triggered a 1% wealth tax on financial assets such as stocks, bonds, excluding the first $250 million. Yeah, this is what happens. If you start pushing capital gains tax and wealth taxes, going after the wealthiest in your state, you're probably going to end up pulling in less revenue in the end if you would have just, I don't know, effed off. Billionaires and, well, wealthy people in general have the most ability to move, the most opportunity to pick up and basically move shop. And this is what happens every single time. You know, San Francisco forever was touted as the greatest, most fiscally responsible city ever. Their tax coffers were always full until they weren't anymore until the city became so freaking unlivable until you know the regulation and tax burdens became so unbearable that people started to flee by the tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands on the state level well they're now headed towards major deficits if not they're already in major deficits the same thing's happening in new york as people fled for greener pastures mostly miami and now it's happening in washington you think jeff bezos is the first person to pack up and leave of course he isn't and he won't be the last this is what happens when you attend to tax the rich. This is what happens when you demonize and attack wealth creation and success. When you say the private market isn't sufficient, isn't doing its job, and therefore government's going to do it for it. Well, you know, it sounds nice on surface, but the government never does a better job than the private sector, ever. And the people who know this best are people who own companies. The people who know what it takes to get a job done on schedule and under budget. And so you try to sell this freaking government scam on them. They might be open to the idea for a little bit, but as we know with government, they'll continue to take more and more and more and more and more taxes and more regulation and more control and more departments until it becomes unbearable and people, especially wealth creators and job creators, get to the point where they tell themselves, all right, well, this isn't working. This isn't the right place for me. I'm going to move to Miami, a place where there's a 0% state income tax, lower regulation, housing, rent, land is cheaper, although maybe a little bit less these days in Miami. Miami, but still, if you're trying to set up shop, if you're trying to set up an operation, it's a whole lot cheaper and more effective and easier to do in Miami than it is anywhere else. Then when it comes to taking a personal salary, you're not hit with the same kind of taxes, the same thing on corporate taxes. And so essentially, you can live your own life without having to worry about signing these massive freaking checks, essentially paying off the government as they crack down on your avoidance behavior. You have more money to play with personally, which you can spend in the local economy, which other people people benefit from. And it's the same concept when it comes to corporate taxes. You can mobilize corporate money to invest in other companies or to expand your own company and create more jobs. It's a better environment. It's a better environment for an entrepreneur, but obviously a worse environment for drug addicts and people who don't want to work, right? Oh, I know. Controversial statement. How dare I say that? Whatever. I'm saying it because it's freaking true. Enough of this freaking scam that hardworking people have to pay and sustain the lives of people who don't want to work who want to abuse the welfare system, or people who want to inject drugs in an open drug market as they rob the neighborhood around them. And of course, Democrats don't have the solution to these problems. All we do when we pay these absorbent taxes to fund all these social programs is further enable the homelessness racket, because that's what it is, the people making bank.
bank working in government, supposedly solving the solution. It's a freaking downward spiral. It's a repeating cycle. And at one point, people wake up to it and they say, no more, especially when you're cutting massive freaking checks and the problems around you get worse. At one point, you say, enough is enough. I am moving to Miami. And that's exactly what Jeff Bezos did here. I'm willing to go on the record and say that it had probably very little to do with reuniting with his family. Because let's be real, Jeff Bezos can move his family anywhere, visit them at any time. Jeff Bezos moved to Miami for the same reasons as every other multimillionaire slash multi-billionaire. Because it's the common sense obvious play as Democrat cities continue to falter. We tried to warn them, but they just wouldn't listen. You increase the minimum wage, everything is going to get more expensive. We're going to see inflation. You print more money, we're going to see inflation. You defund the police, we're going to see more crime. You attack billionaires, they're going to leave. You attack them on a state level, they'll move to another state. You attack them on a federal level, they'll leave the damn country. Then who benefits? Well, it certainly isn't the American citizens, that's for sure. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, friends, and I'll see you on the next one.